When two attackers cross paths, then a crossover is taking place. To exploit this, the two defenders marking them should communicate, call the switch, and then change their momentum to cover their new responsibility. We have an in-depth video about switching here, but for this video, you'll only need a basic understanding. Crossovers are an offensive mistake because each defender has a positional advantage to the alternate space. Here's a great example of a well-executed switch. Watch how the deeper mud defender points to communicate to her teammate, giving them ample time to reverse their momentum, resulting in both cuts being covered. Exploiting crossovers is actually theoretically very similar to exploiting clustering. Take a look at this point in the play. Here, both attackers are closely together and the defense are sandwiching them. If all the players were stationary, then it would be just like a surrounding setup to exploit the cluster, which we discussed in the previous video. Modern offenses are actually already fairly good at minimizing crossovers. The strategy to cyclically isolate one or two attackers cutting at a time means there's a slim chance of crossover occurring, as attackers purposely do not interrupt the cutting order. Here, vertical stack is shown, but this is equally applicable to side stack. The cyclical nature of modern offenses is a key point I want to talk more about. Offenses from side stack to hex all use rotation as a tool to advance the disc up the field. Normally this is fine, but if done incorrectly it can lead to mistakes. We're going to look at Hrut playing some loose side stack and vert. Hrut's primary strategy is to play with counterflow rotation, like most current ultimate teams. And what that means is the disc moves against the current of the rotating players. This is an example of a good offensive point from Hrut. But they have enough players out of that city to put together a very competitive side. We'd love to see them come and compete here. It's the uh, young team from the Netherlands. Hrut, Bastan de Jong opens up the shoulder. Lola Dam the target. Mozeka in hot pursuit, but Lola Dam streaks free. Okay, Bastin so when does it go wrong? It goes wrong when the currents cross over. When many Hrut players are engaged as the dump, their instinct is to make a move up the line. Upline cuts go against the current of the offense, meaning if another attacker cuts at the same time, then the defenders will be able to exploit the upcoming crossover and the cuts will be neutralized. Watch here as Tom Blasman tries to make the move up the line, blocking the throw to the marginally open Lola Dam. Even though the attackers didn't end up fully crossing over, neither cut could be thrown to because of the threat of either defender intercepting the disc. The cut from Blasman and under Hrut players through this game also leaves the lane that Hrut are looking to isolate clogged with players. Here's some options to remedy this. If you want to continue to primarily look for upline resets, then when the handler engages the dump, the current must be switched off and no more players from downfield should be cutting to the underspace. This allows the dump to make the move up the line, sure that they're not running into a defender. Here's GB doing just that, with Lloyd Cheeseman making the move, sending his defender to the Shadow Realm, and then throwing the score. If Cheeseman doesn't get free here up the line, then ideally one of these players should cut back for the reset. Another option is to go with the flow. Here's Revolver recognizing that their isolated lane is clogged up, and then swinging the disc all the way to a score. If you're skeptical about rotating offenses, then I'd highly recommend watching this game, Revolver vs Sub-Zero at US Nationals in 2019. Both offenses are using counterflow rotation most of the time. Another way to minimize crossovers is by designing plays where one attacker cuts into each designated valuable space at a time and then clear to a neutral space. For example, this is the most prevalent way of playing horizontal spread. Depending on where the disc is, one of the closest cutters cuts under and the other cuts deep, leaving no chance for crossover. We'll talk later in this series about how to counter this behavior. We can go even farther with crossovers though. Here's a map that I call an ultimate territory map. If we draw every player as a node on our pitch, and then expand these nodes until they collide, we can see which spaces each player is closest to. This gives each player a map of the space they can expect to be the first to if the disc is thrown at that point in time. 
Consider how, if attacker A cuts under to this space, then defender 2 could potentially flash poach into this space and arrive before attacker A. Obviously, defender 2 will not always make this decision. It will depend on how active they believe attacker B is, and whether defender 1 will be able to turn this flash poach into a switch. But the potential rewards are massive. If defender 2 makes an early flash poach, then they may neutralize and contain this option, increasing the stall count. Or a later flash poach could bait the thrower and lead to a D. It's unrealistic for an attacker to consider a territory map in a game. Instead, aim to minimize crossing over into enemy territory by never cutting directly towards a defender and by avoiding cuts that intersect or pass closely by where the bulk of the defense is. Here's an example of a cut that invites a flash poach by entering into enemy territory. Yuko Suzuki catches the disc near the sideline. Mish Phillips is on the mark and after initially marking traditionally, she turns in field to get a view of the downfield players. She recognizes a cut, marginally free, going towards the end zone and takes a step to prevent the throw. Suzuki recognizes that she is now outside of Phillips's field of vision and that Phillips is out of position and opts to give go. The issue is that her cut leads her directly into the path of the front of the stack, meaning Montoya neutralizes her cut. Ideally, Phillips would then quickly switch on to the player left free, but she does not. Phillips not preempting that this switch was likely, and a lack of communication between her and Montoya leaves a mud attacker free for the score. Mud could choose to prevent this switch being viable by setting a deeper vertical stack, or by Suzuki instead accelerating to the backfield, perhaps looking to dribble across the width of the pitch. Thanks for watching this video. One of the reasons we love Hex here at Hive Ultimate is because it maximizes your territory. If you'd like to learn more about territory in Ultimate, pledge just $1 to gain access to the director's cut of these videos, podcast style discussions between me and Felix that go into detail about the concepts mentioned in these videos. In the next episode, we'll tackle inactivity. See you then!